Uh, we'll take our conversation forward uh, with uh, our guest editor, Mr. Ramamurthy, and joining me now is one and only Radhika Gupta. Hello. Are you Hello. in the studio? Thank you. It's nice to see you. I haven't met in a while. I know. And it's nice to be in the studio. Yeah. You obviously know each other. Of course, of course we do. Yes. <laughs> so what are we talking? Uh, naturally, with Radhika, we'll be talking about more mutual funds yes. and the Indian economy Thank you. because of her specialization. Absolutely. And how it's now become easier, like, you know, we were earlier highlighting, to participate into the entire mutual fund schemes, right? Yeah, it has become yeah. much easier today for anybody to participate. It's all in mobile. I'm sure Radhika will be able to throw more light onto it. What are the efforts that you have taken to ensure that mutual fund, particularly in your case, uh, the penetration improves and more and more investors are able to access your mutual fund? So firstly, I think we're having this conversation at a great time because we just crossed 50 lakh crores as yes, an industry. So <laughs> we, we've got the half century mark. We now need to work towards the century. But I think, you know, I keep telling people in the industry that we're probably working at the best time in the industry because today there is awareness of mutual funds. And I think mutual fund Sahi is a landmark yeah. campaign. Nowhere in the world, in most industries, do you see competitors come together to pool money mm. to do an investor development program that has continued for many years. And I mean, I have views on how you can extend mutual funds Sahi hai. But awareness is there. Like, I did this experiment on the sets of Shark Tank with the crew. Mm. You know, lots of people in the crew, cast, people who drew dress. Yeah, how many of you have heard of the word mutual fund? 60% of people raise their hand. Not bad. Now, if I say how many of you have heard Actually, the word SIP? then even more people raise their hand because most people think SIP and mutual fund is a different thing. How the, about one saying thank you to media? Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's all, thank you. It's all, it's all you, it's all you. Thank you media. The, the, the opportunity part is though, if you ask how many of you have done in SIP, done it, yeah. that is 10, 20 percent. And then to his point though, I remember actually opening up SIPs on that set because it's become so easy to do that. Yeah. So digitization has made it Two minutes, mein, you can get yeah. this done. And so that's why I think it's the best time to work in the industry. 10 years ago, explaining a mutual fund was a pain. Maybe 20 years later, everyone will have a mutual fund. Mm. So we are actually working in the golden period. But how do you increase that 10% to even a 50%? How do you get people to actually make that investment in, and, you know, get an SIP? I think there are two things. One, I think we haven't explored the Young India opportunity mm. enough. If you look at... Young India, which is your millennial plus Gen Z, it is half the investor base in this country. And by the way, 80-90% of them prefer equity investing. So yeah. we are doing a lot as a brand to think about Young India. Young India is mostly hanging out on social media. So like it or not, your kid is going to make decisions and get influenced by influencers and people there. We have 12 crore crypto accounts in this country, many more people on online gaming platforms. So. There's something to learn about how they're marketing. So I think Young India is a little bit of a missed opportunity and we have to start speaking the language of Young India. I think women is a missed opportunity. Yeah. Finance is still very technical. Most people's worry is, how do I start? And we have to... Aata. And we have to position mutual funds as simple problem solvers. All this... Nobody wakes up thinking, I want a flexi cap fund today. I want a large and mid cap fund. People don't know what these things mean. I give a idea. No campaign idea. Actually, mutual fund easy hai. Mutual fund so, easy yeah, hai. Kaun sa mutual idea. fund sahi hai. Most <laughs> people don't know in 4,000 schemes how to get started. Yeah. So how can this, most people think I want to save for my son's education just like we were talking Nikunj or I want to yeah. save for my daughter's marriage or something. They don't wake up thinking large, mid, small cap. So we have to repurpose these things as mutual fund can solve my problem. SIP se hoga. Mm, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. Mr. Ramamurthy, there's this whole old school thought, right or wrong, I don't know, but I've seen that when the generation has changed, the interest in stock market has come back. You mm. know, there are these not very great memories. I had, when my father used to tell me about what happened in 1992, what happened to a US 64, and then what happened in 2002 after the TMT meltdown. Do you think somewhere that is the messaging which is the most critical messaging? The, because that happened because that time the regulations were different, the exchanges were different, the transparency was different. And in a sense, the system was very different. So now those things, now you have a market risk. You don't have a risk in terms of a collapse of the system. That is one important point. As I told you, two important drivers there. One is a development-oriented development policy regime and consistently giving a development orientation, which you have seen in the recent past, is a very important contributor. The second is a very robust 
regulatory regime which concentrates so heavily on investor protection and investor education. If you look at it for an investor, see, you, you talked about the the earlier times and the fiascos. If uh, you were, if you had had the opportunity of going into a ring, the 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 age of people who were getting inside the ring and coming out of you have seen it would have never been anything below 50 to 60. Yeah. Wow. Today, if you look at the people who are participating in the market, whether it is a broker's office or whether it is an investor, the age is very less. Radhika made a mention of that and I made a mention about the age profile of yeah. the mm -hmm. new investors who have come in. So that itself makes very different approach towards investing. It is no longer somebody giving you a tip. Yeah. People today want to read and understand. Mm -hmm. Well, by way of reading, they may read a tip which may be good, bad, ugly. That's a different issue. Mm -hmm. But knowledge is available in a digital media, in a financial, about finance, which makes it easier. And I think that has been the important hallmark and the difference. Three things, therefore. One is, of course, digitalization. Mm -hmm. First is a very strong, robust, development-oriented policy regime mm -hmm. and a very wonderful regulatory regime. I think these three have been contributing for the growth of markets. Yeah, but as we're discussing this topic, then let's also bring on board our, our next guest, Harsh Jain. He's the co-founder and COO at Grow, which is a financial services platform with mutual fund stocks, ETFs, IPO, etc. Good to have you on board. And Harsh, we were just discussing in our studios, talking a little bit more how to increase the interest in SIPs, mutual funds, etc. A lot, of course, has been done. But what more do you think needs to be done, especially to tap into the next gen? Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Hi, uh, Radhika uh, uh Good to be here. Uh, so yeah, mutual funds, I think, so, so we were party to the, like, you know, last five years, we have seen uh, the scale has gone up significantly. In fact, this, this month, we would have done 1 million new SIPs. And if I see last year, same month, it would just be 3 lakh, 4 lakh. So the, the scale is growing. And I think the, uh, the whole awareness, the need of, uh, why they should do mutual funds, why people should do SIP is significantly growing. Uh, but the few segments, definitely there is still penetration growth that is possible. Uh, youths are coming, but segments like, you know, minors, people investing for their kids are still, uh, if you see people in the age of 35 to 45, 50, they have kids, but then there's not a very, very simple, easy way of investing uh, for the minors. And I think Radhika, I just listened, I, I, she mentioned about the whole women, women, you know, participation in the industry. I think that can also, there is a scope to uh, go up uh, while whether it's a simplicity or just a inherent friction or it's, you know, uh, some more different level of awareness, but the needs to be solved and it's, it's getting solved. It's just a momentum that will drive automatically because a lot more, the last three, four years, we have seen one, uh, you know, momentum uh, towards the capital market, towards the mutual funds. And now we will see the next uh, people who are sitting beyond, like far farther from the fence will also start getting to fence. In another decade, we will see probably, you know, 40, 50% of the population having a uh, folio in their, uh, you know, uh, having a folio active in mutual funds. In fact, we have, yeah, Mr. Sundar Haraman as well, Harsh. Uh, and I just want to get him into the conversation, the MD and CEO at BSC. He also would like to make a point to you. Go ahead, sir. Uh, Harsh, you yourself are part of the next gen and uh, you were part of a, a new revolution uh, in terms of making it easier for people to invest in mutual funds in a big way. How has been your journey in doing that? And what do you think will be your future roadmap as to how you will be taking it to those two important points which you mentioned, which all of us all have it very close to our heart, uh, taking it to the uh, Nari Shakti and the Yuva Shakti and improving it. What do you think will be your views on that? So two points. One is what has been the experience in your journey and what do you think you will do for taking it forward? Yeah, sure. So I won't say it is Easier, I would say it's simpler. Uh, and the, the difference is that it is still, you know, putting your money and uh, investing in a capital market should not be easy. Uh, you know, it should be simple. The processes have uh, now become uh, way simpler, way transparent. Now people can see what they're investing into. All that information that traditionally used to come from some uh, agents or some people, now they have an alternate. While there are still a uh, lot of investors who are investing uh, offline, the significant number of new investors who are coming online on the mobile, consuming the data from different sources, making their own choices. 
So this trend has been the reason why we've seen the growth. And I continue to, uh, you know, see that this will now shift to a next segment also, while the younger ones are getting to a place where they have disposable income now. Uh, yesterday, I was talking to somebody and then the person mentioned that, you know, mutual fund is new fixed deposit. Everyone wants to, you know, if there's a money in, uh, lying in the account, they would want to invest in uh, capital market or in the mutual funds. They want to do SIP. So that level of demand has started generating. And uh, I mean, obviously we helped, we we thought, we realized that the biggest problem was the transparency because people were doing it in a black box and we opened it up. We like, we, we, and like a lot of people like us who started along with us, we tried to make it transparent. Like, okay, all the, all, you know, you can see the uh, details of the each scheme. You can see uh, what are the expense ratios are, who's the fund manager, what the performance has been. And you make the decision yourself. So you feel confident. You feel that, you know, you made, you, it's uh, you're making a decision for yourself. So that has helped significantly. I think there was a gap in uh, in content also because there was initially done for, you know, for and by the people who understand deep finance. And yes, it's a finance problem, but at the end of the day, it's a consumer who is supposed to make a decision. Right? Sure. It's, it's a, we, we've seen a lot of these to be solved from the financial, how the trends of economy, how the global US, mm. uh, you know, debt and everything is going to impact. But when it comes to an end, a uh, consumer who's probably, you know, running a Sherwani shop in a, in Kanpur or uh, working in a government uh, job or doing his own sure. small startup. Th these people need to know what is it for me and how do I do this? Right. Hmm. And when it comes to mutual fund, the regulations have, are so, I mean, so forward thinking right. that right from the experience of KYC to the standardization of schemes, to the, you know, uh, all the regulations around the AMC itself, how do you manage the fund are so beautifully designed to protect the retail investor that True. investor doesn't need to worry and need to really look into the uh, depth of the financial. They just need to know, okay, if I want to start investing, there are some small standard funds. I can start with it. Absolutely. And over time, I'll, uh, I'll increase my uh, portfolio. Right. You know, Radhika, I want you to come in here because Hush made such a valid point and I think it stayed with both sir and me that mutual funds are the new FDs mm. for, you know, most of our, even eating our young population. They've never invested in FDs. Mutual fund is their first go-to, you know, um, sort of fixed investment or, you know, investment that they're completely sure of. I think it's a couple of things. One is, as, as he made the point, you know, in mutual funds now, you can lose money because market goes up and down. Of course. But, you know, nothing is going to go wrong. And in that sense, you have that stability and confidence yeah. that a bank used to give you. True. But I think today's youth is a lot more aspirational. I was reading a statistic that 65% of young people in India now want to do a startup. Mm. 50 years ago, when my father joined civil services, people wanted a permanent job yeah. in this country. Sarkari Nokri. Mm. Haan, sarkari nokri. I mean, I always joke that once upon a time, Mother India had a song that said, Dunya mein agar hum aaye hain, to jeena padega, jeevan zehre peena padega. Today, this youth is the youth that says, Kaun kehta hai, mujh se na ho paayega, apna time aayega. So, India's generation has made a shift. And as you see all this development happening, you also wonder, how am I going to participate in this growth? I think this government has done a fantastic job of marketing India True. also. Uh, and the youth sees that and you want to participate in that growth. And an SIP has also made it very democratic. It's a product that treats a 100 rupee investor the same way as a 100 crore investor, which is not an easy thing in India, by the way. You get treated very differently in India if you have a 100 crore net worth versus a 10,000 rupee net worth, but not in mutual funds. We treat you the same way. And I think that is what is catching fancy. I have got called SIP wali auntie, which is an auntie I don't feel great about, <laughs> by an airport security guard who told me, Madam, I've seen you, you are one of those SIP wali aunties. Just at least they're watching, right? At yeah. least they're watching. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a good reputation yeah. to be called as BSC wali uncle. Yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. Maybe they will call me BSC wala granddad. <laughs> BSC wala <haan>, nana. <laughs> and, and maybe our uh, young gun here also, Harsh, I wonder what he would be called. Bhaiya, bhaiya. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but just to understand one product which Radhika mentioned, which is the startup. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I look at the startup, it's not a, it, it's culture, it's not a fever. Mm -hmm. Startups and the startup entrepreneurs are coming from cities and from towns which perhaps are difficult to even find on the map of India. It's so inspiring to say that how the young India is changing. So from really an exchange standpoint, 
you came out with an SME platform, mm. which has done wonders. And now SMEs, they can actually go to the capital market. And I've seen such fantastic SMEs raising 50 crores, three, four years, they migrate to the big board. Such a nice culture of innovation, which is coming in. Do you see that sooner than later, there really could be a startup exchange? There could be an exchange which will actually be doing something on startup? Already there has been some effort made by BSE in this regard. There is something in existence, but it has to, it has to get into the next level. Uh, see, it is a question of how much you can dream, mm. right? Uh, look at the way we have grown. Till few years before, no, we all used to be worried about how many milligrams or kilograms of sugar we will get in our ration card per person. Mm -hmm. We are from that uh, zamana. Generation. 425 grams of sugar per person per month was the area mm -hmm. from which we are coming in. Today, that is not what is the problem mm -hmm. for the youth. So, they are able to dream. As Mr. Kalam said, President Kalam told, dream is one thing which will never let you sleep. Mm -hmm. Right? So, there are a lot of dreamers today in mm -hmm. India. And I am sure more and more when startups come, there will be more and more growth in that platform which we already have as for startups. It is a question of how we take it to the next level and how we grow on it. One more follow-up question. As India will grow, more and more uh, global connectivity will grow. If I look at global exchanges, there are a plethora of global international products. Sitting in US, you can perhaps invest in the whole world. Mm. You can buy derivatives. You can hedge your portfolio. As India migrates from being a $4 trillion to a $10 trillion economy, we will we'll become a large economy. Do you see exchanges like BAC moving into different offerings, different global products, different way in which how global investments could be structured? There are three parts to it actually. It's a very interesting question that you have asked. Whether the infrastructure that we are planning today is capable of supporting global trading. That is the first question. Yes. The second is whether there is an appetite for global products in India at this point of time. Third, whether the exchanges have talent to package global products into Indian requirements. So, these are the three points which I think will immediately come to mm. my mind. In terms of one, the first question, we are ready. Okay. 24 by 7, if we have to cater to the market requirements with no break. No, 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 sir. Market is not open. No, no, I don't have to cater. No, no, I couldn't see 24 by 7. No, no, no. It's just imagining him. I think it's just imagining him. No, I made a wrong start. I made a wrong start. I am not talking about extension of market hours. I am talking about infrastructural capabilities. They are two different things, sir. But coming to that, sir, you think that's happening? No, no. Market hours. I have no views on it. I have no I am a ladder. I am a ladder. I give what is there in the pot to people who need whatever. And it's it is. not there in the pot right now. Uh, not in my pot, it is there actually. Uh, so if the market wants it, then I put it in the pot. Market wants? I have not been told. Oh. I have not been told. <laughs> they Clearly, give a sigh of relief. <laughs> yeah. So, from an infrastructure perspective, okay. we do have an infrastructure capable of any amount okay. of traffic, any number of times in a day, total day, whatever it is. That's one part of it. As far as the global products, there was an effort made quite some time before when I was to, used to work in NSE on bringing in S&P 500 and Dow Jones futures and options into India. <coughs> maybe it was very much ahead of times it did not work at that time mm. at some point of time people will find it worthwhile to get into global products today Indian products are getting more returns mm. you look at it 11% yeah, yeah. uh, return last year mm. from India 6% from US 3% from China naturally people in India will be feeling very happy to continue to be investing in India so the demand has to come the third is the exchange certainly has knowledge capability to package mm -hmm. things which are global products for local requirements. Mm -hmm. So two of them are boxes are ticked. The middle box where now what is the requirement from the market? I always call it as voice of customer. That will demand how the remaining two are get to be used. So for me, this engaging discussion gives me one punchline. Exchanges are not increasing the time anytime soon. <laughs> I have not made any such statement. If that's what you want to infer, you are absolutely free to infer. Nikun doesn't know. want to age before. Yeah. <laughs> Nikun still wants to be part of young India. Yeah. I like to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> like they say, 40s is the new 30s. Correct. I just know, don't sorry to cut you guys, but the only catch here, Radhika, is that, uh, you know, the kind of wild move that you've seen in the market from those COVID crash, you know, first you had those Robin Hood yeah. traders, just about everyone was in a trading app, sitting at home, yeah. you know, just tracking the markets, buying anything and it gave you great returns, right? And then on a daily basis, we're seeing yeah. the market scale up new highs. 
when the market is going to be in a downturn and nothing rises up in one way, what happens then? Because, you know, this entire new age population which has come to market, it's coming back to market mostly out of a form of feeling. Nothing else is working out. And, you know, very few here. will have will have the gumption to stay put. Yeah, that's the stay in They have not seen a bear market. In exactly. Fact, yeah. There was a right. day, I think a few weeks ago, when the market fell 3% and there was yeah. panic on social media. And yeah. I said, you know, I'm a child of 2008. That was my first correction when I was 24. But I think every bull cycle builds, brings, brings some irrational behavior. The True. people who are buying micro caps. I mean, I had an investor come up to me and say, Madam, micro cap ka ek fund lelo, roz aadha percent milega. You'll get half a percent a day. And so these are wild expectations. So you have a set of that. You have a set of people who are dabbling in SNO, <coughs> even though the regulator says you're not going to make money. Yeah. But on the other hand, since you want to look at the silver lining, you've also had an SIP book that is at 17,000 crores. And mm. you do a 10-year SIP into any fund, not even ours, you will make reasonable amount of money and you will not lose money. So there is some bad behavior and I think that bad behavior will be yeah. punished. But there's also good behavior that's happening. Since I joined the industry, which is not that long ago, the SIP book has gone up 4x, 4,000 yeah. to 17,000 crore. So there's also good behavior. And for your interest, I should tell you, you know, we were talking about Nari Shakti, so we were looking at some of our funds and the sure. man women. Yeah. If you look at some of the small cap funds, etc., etc., men, dom <laughs> men dominate. But okay. if you look at some of the more balanced, advantage, moderate kind of products, mm -hmm. Women have a higher percentage you know, allocation. Done. No, it's Radhika, done. actually, that's exactly the point I uh, made. Women before are you, actually more responsible investors, of the course. point I'm making. Before you walked into the studio, that's yeah, exactly yeah. the point I made. It's very important to bring in more women into the marketplace, particularly mutual funds, because they think balance. Yeah. They are not into and today's yeah. yeah. They are and not into today's return, tomorrow's return, day before yeah. yesterday's return. So the balance is very important. By the way, a big contingent of people who we, we discussed startups. So a big contingent of people who watch Shark Tank mm. are tier to India women mm -hmm. and mothers and mother-in-laws. Yeah. In, so inspiration and aspiration is changing. You know, inspiration and aspiration are translating into reality. I yeah. guess you know these are just not fairy tale stories. You got an idea? There's an opportunity. Yeah. There is an investor and there is a market which actually supports you. But before we wrap, uh, you know, thank you very much all of you for just being part of this special discussion. I've personally got very beautiful memories of Bombay Stock Exchange. I used to walk on the Lal Street with my dad. Yeah. With my uncle, still remember that whole vibe, that whole feeling. I was too young to go into the entire ring. The ring. Mm. But, but we've seen it on TV. We've seen it on TV. And what really, you know, there's a big bull which we always symbolizes the growth of India. But there's another uh, installation which I think is there outside BAC, and that nobody talks about the common man. Ah, the bull with the common man. Yeah. And yeah. that for me is the real beauty yeah. of this bull market. This bull market belongs to the common man. There was a time, Aisha, Indian investors would sell and foreign investors yes. would buy. Yeah. So foreigners were capitalizing a lot on India's growth. But for the first time, this market belongs to the common man. 2021-22 SIP exchanges. So thank you all for being part of this discussion. I think it is so nice to see that what looked like a, like a fairy tale is now almost part of reality. Whether it is... Sensex at 20, 72,000 or Nifty at 21,000. Thank you all for very much for being part of this discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. much.